How's it going there, Music Maker? In today's video, we're going to be looking at the iconic G-Run. This is definitely a lick that you've heard countless times if you're a fan of bluegrass music. And in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down four different examples that you can immediately throw into your playing. And then we're going to do a little bit of training together. And I'll show you kind of how I like to practice these uh, specific kind of licks. Before we dive into the training though, if you haven't had a chance, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below and the bell notification button. That way you get notified whenever I upload a new video here to the channel. Also, if you're interested in things like PDFs of the tab and sheet music for today's exercises, as well as backing tracks and extended cuts of our lessons, go ahead and check out the link below to Mandolin Secrets Guitar Club. There you'll find out how to sign up and get access to all of those goodies. All right, my friend, let's go ahead and start to break down this lick. Where does it come from? How do we use it? And all of those kind of things. So as far as I can tell, and uh, there's kind of some consensus in the like bluegrass scholarly world about this, Lester Flat is kind of seen as the originator of this lick. Now, I'm going to put a huge asterisk next to that and say that I've heard phrases exactly like the G-Run played in early swing music, early blues music. So this set of notes that we combine to make the quote G run is a really common uh, pathway through the major scale that a lot of other musicians have found in the centuries leading up to Bluegrass's creation. I always have to say that kind of stuff just so we can keep things in perspective here, right? So now, what is this lick and how do we put it into our playing? So it's simply a lick that kind of starts on the tonic uh, and, and runs up through what I would call like a major pentatonic kind of pattern. So if we look at the notes that are contained within that lick, we've got G, A, A sharp, B flat, B, D, E, and G. So kind of subtracting that A sharp or B flat from it, it, we've got a G major pentatonic scale here. And that A sharp or B flat can be seen as kind of a, a chromatic uh, alteration or blue note that we use to get up into the third of, of this lick, the B note. Um, you, now, if, if a lot of this is going over your head and you're like, what is this scale gobbledygook? What is a third? What is any of this stuff? Don't worry about it too much. Um, but I would suggest looking up what the major pentatonic scale is because that's going to be really helpful uh, to kind of see how this lick plays out on the fingerboard of the guitar. So uh, we're starting with a big G note, the third fret of our low E string, and then A, A sharp, B, and you're going to hammer on those notes so it's going to sound like this. And if you'll notice what I'm doing in the right hand too, I'm doing rest strokes on these two notes. A lot of folks say that that gives you a clearer, cleaner sound on this lick, and I tend to agree with them, even though I don't always play it with rest strokes. So rest, rest. And if you don't know what a rest stroke is, it just means you pick through the string and land on the next one. You can see how my pick is kind of resting on that string now, right? So if we think about that again, those are the first few notes, and then we've got Open D string, hammer on to the second fret, play the open D as an upstroke, and then rest stroke on your open G. So that, in my opinion, is kind of the classic bluegrass G run. It's the style of G run that you're going to hear in the 40s and 50s bluegrass played by those first generation folks, right? So as bluegrass moves through uh, time and we kind of get into the 1960s, 70s, 80s, a lot of players have had the opportunity to play this style of music and they start to throw their own spice on this lick. So you start to hear like, bluesier variations or variations where you pick all of the notes individually. So let's kind of look at a few examples like that that you can start to throw into your playing just to get a little different flavor when you use the G-Run. So the second one, we're just going to simply pick all of these notes that we played in the first lick. No hammer-ons and no rest strokes. We're going to do free strokes alternate picking here. So it's... 
to give that to you a little clearer one more time. So you, you might be wondering why would you want to do one with hammer-ons and one with, uh, you know, all picked notes. The first one is simply more of what we would call like a legato phrase. And I think it accentuates the kind of syncopation of the lick because you're hammering on three notes. What that ends up doing is accentuating all of the notes that get picked, right? So it's almost like you're hearing this lick. One more time, that's. So to me, those are kind of like the fence post notes, all the notes that get picked. And now listen to the lick again. Those are definitely the ones that stick out, right? Now if we go to that alternate picked version. That's more of an even statement, right? Each note kind of gets equal emphasis. So um, that's maybe like why and how you would use these two different versions. L let's look at even another one here. This one is gonna seem like a ridiculously simple variation, but it, it might uh, be a better kind of punctuation mark for the end of your phrases. Check this out. So what was different there? Instead of picking another upstroke on the D before I hit that last G, I just make that E note on my D string a whole note, or excuse me, a, a quarter note. One, two, ready, go. I like to use that one, like I said, at the end of four bar phrases uh, by having that quarter note at the end of the first bar. I feel like that's just a really good punctuation mark and sets you up uh, to kind of hear that G note as as like the final note of the phrase even even that much better you know let's listen to it one more time so now there's a variation on this phrase specifically and all we're gonna do is change one note now instead of playing that second fret we're actually gonna play a third fret on the D string and this is gonna give us more of like a bluesier uh, character to the lick you hear uh, Del McCurry use this one a lot in some of his kind of slower, groovier, bluesier tunes. Um, and a lot of folks have picked up on this lick in that context. I'm kind of thinking like High on a Mountain or any of those kind of tunes. So here's the lick. And I always like to choke that note a little bit, but um, you can just leave it alone if you want. So, I think those are four pretty good, uh, you know, easy variations to, to incorporate into your playing. Now that we have an idea for what these licks look like slowed down, let's um, start to kind of practice them in context. One thing that I like to do is use a simple backing track um, and then play this phrase in the fourth bar of, of each uh, kind of section of the tune. That's how you typically hear Lester Flat and, and a lot of the early bluegrass players start to use this lick. It's kind of one that you uh, sit at the end of a phrase and put uh, kind of where there's going to be vocal space in a bluegrass tune, you know? So once Lester would be uh, done singing the end of a, of a line of a verse, then he would play a G run. So this exercise that I'm about to show us kind of sets us up for that approach on the G run. And I think it's a great way to kind of, like I said, get your, your feet wet and start to incorporate this into your playing. All right, guitar player, let's go ahead and review those G run licks one more time before we dive into the exercise uh, using a backing track, okay? So uh, just to review the, the Lester flat lick, we're doing a down stroke. A rest stroke on our A string and then hammering on zero, one, two. Down stroke, rest stroke again, hammer on to two. Up stroke on D and then a rest stroke on G. Now the second variation is the exact same set of left hand notes. We're just going to pick every single one of them. So here we go.
Third variation, we just leave off that D note, the upstroke, uh, the final uh, upstroke before the last G. So the picking for that is down, down, up, down, up, down, down. And then the last one, uh, we're simply moving that second fret up to a three on the D. Uh, so it's an F note. And it's the same picking stroke. So down, down, up, down, up, down, down. All right, now let's go ahead and take each of these licks one at a time. I'm gonna play four times through with lick one. And what we're gonna do is play three bars of rhythm and then insert this lick into the fourth bar to kind of set us up for the turnaround of bar one again. Uh, if that kind of confuses you, just watch me once, see what I do, and then rewind the video, and then play with me. You'll, you'll pick it up pretty quick, I'm sure. Alrighty, so we're going to do the Lester lick four times here. Like I said, three bars of rhythm to set each one up. Um, and I'm going to take this actually at 70 beats per minute, or 140, depending on how you like to subdivide. Um, and here we go. Rhythm. Two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three. All right, so there's the first lick with a backing track on it. How do you think you did? If uh, you were stumbling through some of the notes there, don't hesitate to pause the video right now, rewind it, maybe even slow the video down with that gear icon below. That's a great tool that we have here uh, in the modern age, and I highly suggest using it. All right, uh, if you're feeling good though, let's go ahead and dive into that second lick. Um, we're gonna pick all of our notes now using alternate picking. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And the same kind of setup. Three bars of rhythm, lick, three bars of rhythm, lick, etc. So here we go. 70 beats per minute again. Here we go. All right. All right, there's lick number two. Let's go ahead and try variation three, where we just land on that E note. No upstroke on the D. Ready, go. All right, there we have it. Now, let's go ahead and move on to the fourth lick, the one with the F note. Ready, go. All right, my friend, that's all four of them. And there's a really simple kind of practice exercise that you can use there to, to get all of these licks incorporated into your playing in no time. 
Now, say you had trouble uh, playing along and you're maybe not even sure what a bass drum rhythm is, don't worry about that. We've got other lessons on the channel to learn how to do a bass drum. If you're having trouble with, with putting the rhythm together with the lick, just focus on the lick for now. Um, rewind that video, play along with me, but only when I'm playing the lick notes, right? So you can kind of just chill out while I'm playing rhythm and every four bars, try and nail that G run with me there. I think that could be a good exercise if you're having trouble hitting all the notes for now. All right, my friend, now that you have an idea for how to practice these G runs and you've got four good variations to toss in there, it's time to get picking, all right? Um, like I said, I like to use backing tracks. You can record yourself, or if you sign up for a membership at Mandolin Secrets Guitar Club, uh, link below in the description, we'll provide you with your own custom-made backing tracks that you can use to practice this G run. Before we get out of here, if you don't mind, uh, leave us a comment below and let us know if you found this exercise and these G-Run variations useful. I know that they're pretty basic, so uh, some of you advanced players might be left wanting, but never fear. I've got some stuff coming up for you right quick, okay? All right, my friend. Thank you so much for checking this video out. We'll catch you in the next one. Take her easy. Mm -hmm.